Hey, what's up everybody? This is Meath24, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Avengers Mythos graphic novel. Uh, this is a graphic novel that I came across a long time ago back at Barnes & Noble, and, and for some reason I thought it was uh, part of the Season 1 collection, because I remembered browsing through it real quick and seeing Vision talking to Ultron, so uh, for the life of me when I found the uh, Season 1 Doctor Strange and Ant-Man there, I was so confused as to why I couldn't find the Season 1 Vision comic that I swore I had seen, uh, and that's because it was actually part of this. This is a decently thick collection, and does a similar thing to what the Season 1 comics do, in that it goes back and revisits the origins of a lot of the major Marvel characters, many of them Avengers, some of them not, um, or at least they're not primarily Avengers. And it does present a nice variety of characters here. You know, it could have been easy enough for them to just do Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, Ant-Man, and, you know, like the core Avengers team there. But they do some different characters, and I really appreciate that uh, for the sake of it presents a different perspective from all these characters. The comics that are collected in here, there's actually two of them that I believe were like, uh, uh, like one-shots that were done as part of a single thing or were written by the same team, and then the rest of them are all um, a little bit different from those. Uh, those two stories are longer, more dialogue and text-heavy, uh, which is fine. I don't mind when comics do that sometimes, especially if they do it as well as those two do, and I'll get more to that in a minute. Uh, the rest of them are more of a sort of modern retelling of, of the characters' origins. Not that they pick them up from, you know, their, their Golden Age and Silver Age origins and plop them in the modern day as much as they did with the Ant-Man Season 1, uh, but it's a, a case of where the dialogue and the art has been significantly updated to make it sound and look less archaic, uh, for lack of a better term. Much as I love a lot of the origin stories of the Marvel characters, when you go back and reread them, the dialogue is really goofy because they're saying exactly what they're thinking, and so you don't have much of that here, thankfully. So, taking a look here at the front, got a lot of the characters highlighted, and uh, I'll show more of them here inside, actually. Uh, there's a spine. It's not, like, huge or anything, but it's decently thick compared to, uh, like, the Season 1 stuff and a lot of the one-shots. You got on the back some uh, cool art behind Vision there. And so, uh, looking at the inside here, again, there's a little uh, set of banners of all the characters that are going to be featured. Uh, and then you do have a list here in the front of all the different uh, Mythos storylines. So you have Mythos Captain America and Mythos Hulk. You have the Avengers origins for Ant-Man and the Wasp, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, Vision, Luke Cage, and Thor. So I think it's a nice uh, variety of characters there because they have very different backstories, very different personalities. The Captain America comic and the Hulk comic have a really cool art style that's very heavily uh, detailed. It's got kind of a 40s and 50s like color scheme and um, sort of character style to it, which I think works really well for both of those comics because of uh, obviously Captain America's World War II origins and uh, Bruce Banner's sort of post-war research. I think works really good for both of those. You got a lot of World War II shots there, the uh, propaganda poster for Captain America. Uh, and these two comics are as much about, you know, revisiting the origin of these characters as it is figuring out just who they are, you know, what their personalities are all about, what sort of makes them tick. And uh, I think it's, it's really fun to sort of jump into the head of Steve Rogers and of Bruce Banner here. And if I'm being completely honest, Hulk's never really been my favorite of the uh, Avengers or my favorite Marvel character, but I think they handle him very well here. Uh, similarly, they handle... Uh, sort of the personal struggles of Ant-Man and sort of his emotional uh, distancing with uh, Janet before she becomes the Wasp. And while I did enjoy Ant-Man Season 1 for being an updated version, I think this is a better uh, modern telling of the Ant-Man origin story. It doesn't sound quite as clunky when he's talking. Uh, obviously, it's, it's meant to be more of a modern day setting, but they don't force the, uh, you know, the Facebook and the cell phones and all these new cars and stuff in, in the story. It's, it's implied that it's a more modern setting, but you don't feel like they're shoving it down your throat quite as much. So that's 
a really good spin on this, I think. Uh, that's one of the longer ones in here, mainly because you have two characters that they're covering at the same time, so they kind of have to justify it. Probably my favorite, just in terms of uh, the way that they deal with sort of the inner thoughts and uh, giving personality traits to the character, is the visions. Uh, there's a lot of, again, great detail here in all the artwork, and they, they really went over the top with the art for the most part in this collection here. I also have a real soft spot for Ultron as a character in, in the Marvel comics, and I've generally found that there are few comics that Ultron is in that I didn't like. Uh, and so it's, it's really cool to see, for this character, him painted as a villain, as a machine of destruction at the outset, and uh, then sort of questioning his own being... Uh, after he attacks the Avengers, and trying to find an identity for himself. Uh, we also get a couple other Avengers in here that we don't have origin stories for, but we do have Hawkeye and Black Panther that make a quick appearance here. Uh, but mainly this is about Pym and Vision and Ultron, and a little bit of Wasp in there. And I think it makes sense that it's the first one to follow up right after uh, the Ant-Man-Wasp origin story there. After that we have the Luke Cage origin, and... To be honest, he's a character that I I know enough about in his inclusion with all the Avengers stuff uh, in more recent comics, but I hadn't really uh, researched that much about him as a character or you know how he kind of came into uh, being such a powerful and uh, durable guy. And so this was kind of cool for something very different for me. Um, this one has a little bit more sort of classic thick outlines on the characters. Uh, exaggerated colors in the background there. Uh, more, I guess, in line with the mainstream Marvel art style. Uh, but it does a really good job, again, of, of giving me a reason to care about Luke Cage and, and giving a good look at who he is and, and you know, where he came from and uh, where he's eventually going to go as well as a character because this basically sets him up as the hero for hire. Uh, it deals with his first few scuffles in New York, and uh, then kind of leaves off with him finding something of a greater purpose for himself, which I think is a good good spot to end it, you know. Uh, don't have to go too far into his heroic exploits there, but um, I think it works for the story. The one that I... Th well, actually, the two that I think are weak links in the story, not that they're bad by any means, but they're not up to the quality of the other ones, uh, are the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver and the Thor comics. Uh, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, I knew their origin story pretty well, in that they were, you know, Magneto's kids, and uh, that they encounter him out in uh, some middle-of-nowhere town, and, uh, you know, he informs them that they are uh, they're special, they're gifted, even though everyone uh, kind of is afraid of them because of their powers. He ends up getting them to join the Brotherhood of Mutants. They fight against the X-Men, but then start questioning what they're doing because they think Magneto is trying to control them too much. And uh, that's sort of how they end up leaving the Brotherhood of Mutants and then coming to the, uh, the aid of, of the Avengers. The thing that's really weird about this is how just abrupt things are at the end there. Um, you know, they, they end up leaving the Brotherhood, and are kind of on the run there, and then just all of a sudden they're safe from everyone, and then they're suddenly talking to the Avengers and sign up for the Avengers. And so it's it's weird that it was that big of a jump uh, at the end there. It would have been, I think, fine if they had ended it with, like, hey, we've heard of this group called the Avengers in America. Uh, let's, you know, try and get in contact with them and, and see what comes of that. And then, you know, maybe have ended it with a not necessarily a concrete... Uh, concrete uh, addition of them as, as new team members, but the fact that it's just something like, yeah, great, we're all hunky-dory with each other, that seemed a little, a little bit much. Um, the Thor storyline, I think, is a little bit better than Quicksilver and Scarlet Witches. Um, it's just that Thor's really never been my favorite of the Marvel characters, and there's a lot of the uh, mythos and lore of Asgard that's going on here that they don't cover real in-depth. Uh, they, they mention a bunch of other artifacts and a bunch of other characters in here that if you're not familiar with the uh, the greater story of Thor, is going to kind of go over your head. And while I know some of it, uh, a lot of it was just sort of jargon they're throwing at me, uh, the forging of Mjolnir was cool, 
and I think is an important point that they would have, you know, they were they were smart to put in there. Um, and seeing Thor grow up a little bit here and and sort of his uh, self justification for for bringing the hammer uh, out to battle, I think works all right. It's just that I wish they would have done more with him as a character and more with his relation to Odin and to Loki. They cover it enough, but it's not... It's not enough that gives me a reason to feel like he's a hero that I should invest in, you know? Like, like he's a hero that I should feel like, yeah, I'm rooting for this guy. It's just sort of like, oh, yeah, Thor's a guy with a hammer and muscles, and he's a god, but that's, you know, it's cool, but it's not anything that was like, wow, this is this is really compelling. Um, they do a quick little play-by-play -play here of a bunch of the uh, the beasties and, and other gods that he would fight in his day uh, before he was banished to Earth, and, you know, that kickstarts the whole Thor storyline uh, that most people know. Again, the ending is really abrupt, uh, like with the Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, it just sort of you know, jumps to him being like, oh, he's been without his hammer forever, and then suddenly this average-looking dude comes and picks up the hammer, and then he's Thor again. So it was a little a little clunky there at the end, I, I think. But, um, you know, I, I think these are, by and large, a really good set of, of retold stories from the Marvel Universe. Uh, and if you're looking at getting something like this or Season 1, I'd recommend this over the Season 1 issues as a collective. Uh, that said, there are certain characters that I don't cover in this that they do cover in Season 1 that I'm not... Uh, not that I'm not familiar with the characters, but I'm not familiar with the Season 1 tellings. Uh, those being Fantastic Four, uh, Iron Man, Wolverine, Spider-Man, and there is one of like the, the forming of the Avengers. There might be a couple others that I'm not thinking of. Obviously, I have Doctor Strange one, and that's not included in here. Um, but if you're looking for something that's like a telling of, of a nice variety of characters or you're looking for some really cool art style and, and some more dialogue-heavy comics, I think this is a, a good option, uh, especially for someone maybe not as well acquainted with all of the Avengers characters. Um, the one thing that I would keep in mind, though, with this uh, is that it is a T-plus rated comic, whereas most of the Season 1 comics, I, I believe, are sort of the all-audiences rating. Uh, there's a little bit more... not real vulgar dialogue in here, but a little bit more adult dialogue, and the storylines are written in a, in a way that is intended for a little bit older readers, you know, 13, 14 on up, I think, is, is kind of the range that you're looking at for this series, but, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this, I think it was, it was a good way to sort of, uh, get my feet wet with Luke Cage, and, and, uh, revisit the Ant-Man and Wasp storyline, because like I said, I think that one's a lot better than the Season 1 version of the Ant-Man story, uh, and I really enjoyed Vision. So on the whole, I, I would I would really recommend this if you're looking for a sort of origin stories collection. Uh, but that pretty much wraps up this review, and with that, I will see you guys next time.